on the diet, what would be your macronutrient kind of target um, between mm -hmm. carbs, fats, protein? Yeah, so um, there's only those three. Um, yeah. Thank you for mentioning macronutrients. <laughs> you know, there's fats, carbohydrates, and proteins. So, um, you know, if you're not eating any, like right now, the standard Western diet, which I assume probably applies to, you know, the standard diet in, in Hong Kong and other places, uh, mm -hmm. certainly Australia, other places in Asia too. Um, it's mostly, um, it's mostly carbohydrate. And that's, you know, really since agriculture, that's the way we've been able to provide sufficient calories to humans living in populations so they don't starve to death. But, but now that we, we, we can produce more food than we need, we can be more selective. And um, so if you're dropping your, you know, in the standard Western diet, 60 or 70% of the calories are from carbohydrate. So if you're dropping that down, you know, to zero effectively or 5%, um, you got to increase something else. So can you increase protein? You can, uh, uh, and you can in a healthy way. It's debatable what the ideal proportion there is, but uh, you know, a good, you know, 25% is fine. Um, my colleagues at the Cancer Research Center say 35% of calories from protein is fine. Um, above that, um, two things happen is you get uh, a, a putrefaction and of, of undigested protein in the gut, which can create some problems in the gut. And also when that, uh, uh, when those amino, excess amino acids are absorbed into the blood, they get converted into glucose anyway. So it will start to raise your blood sugar uh, after about 35% of calories. Um, so that would be the maximum. So then, you know, if it's, you know, 30 or 35 and five, the rest has to come from fat. And, and this is something that's hard for people because we've been told, we've been telling you for the last 40 years, don't eat fat. It's bad for you. It makes you fat, you know, cause heart disease. Um, it doesn't, uh, there are good fats and bad fats for sure. Uh, animal fats are generally good for you. Saturated fats are generally fine. Um, in fact, could be quite healthy and cardioprotective in some cases like dairy. Um, you know, trans fats are obviously out, they're bad. Um, some vegetable oils are very healthy. The mono, uh, unsaturated vegetable oils, like olive oil is very good. Avocado oil is very good. Uh, most of the other vegetable oils are highly inflammatory, highly, highly processed foods that are just not good for you. These are the seed oils, you know, like cotton seed oil, linseed oil, the stuff they make margarine out of, mm -hmm. um, and corn oil. Uh, just don't eat, I, I <laughs> don't eat any of that, no matter what you do. You know, if you just stop eating that stuff and stop eating sugar, you're, you're, <laughs> you know, I know your show is about aging. You're probably going to live a lot longer just from doing those two things. Uh, and, you know, good old butter, especially if it comes from grass fed cows, uh, that has a very high ratio of omega-3 to omega-6, which is anti-inflammatory omega-3. Uh, omega-6 is pro-inflammatory. Vegetable oils are high in omega-6. So, um, so yeah, so getting back to the ratios, if you think about it, it's going to be mostly fat. And it sounds like a lot of fat, but remember fat is very nutrient dense mm -hmm. and, and it's, it's also hydrophobic. So you don't get water with the fat. So, so if you think of something like, you know, celery or, or a salad or something like that, you know, if you took all the water out of that, it, it would just be a few flakes in the bottom of your bowl because so much of that is water. Um, whereas fat is all calories in there. And if you look at a standard 2000 day calorie and you take 70% of your calories from fat, you know, if you want a, a visual picture of that, how much fat would that be? Uh, it would only be about two thirds of a cup of olive oil, which, it, which in terms of mass is not a lot. I mean, I don't, it's probably a good thing to drink two thirds of a cup of olive oil a day, but I, I don't necessarily recommend it, but, but that's all the fat you need. So, so it's not that you have to eat a, a lot of fat, but if fat is a high proportion of your diet, um, it will provide those calories. It'll satiate your need to eat. So you don't tend to overeat. Uh, it'll help you switch to, um, uh, to fat burning as well. It'll stimulate uh, the conversion of your metabolism to fat burning. And, and when you do that, even it seems counterintuitive, but when you eat more fat, you start losing fat because your body's now burning it. And, and not only does it burn what you intake, it starts to burn what you've been storing, you know, in that spare tire all those years. Uh, and over about 12 weeks, typically men will lose 20 to 25 pounds of fat and women 10 to 15 pounds of fat in, in about 12 weeks. Uh, there is, there is a, I shouldn't mention, there's, there's a lot of criticisms of ketogenic diet, most of which are misguided. Uh, one is that it's just a diuretic effect. Um, there is a diuretic effect at the beginning in the first uh, 10 days to two weeks. After that, you're going to lose a pound to two pounds of fat a week um, until you reach your stable weight, which for me is about 152 pounds. Right. So a couple of things I wanted to dive in there. But uh, so quick question. Do you have so 25% of uh, so 25 to 35% protein? 
I was trying to think, uh, what would that be like grams per kilogram? Is that something you ever think about? Because uh, yeah, we do. I mean, I teach nutrition. So we talk about that, you know, the old number was 0.8 grams per kilogram, and maybe 1.2 for, uh, you know, athletes and so on. It depends what your output is and what you're doing. Um, <clears throat> but two is easily, easily uh, sustainable, uh, two grams per kilogram. Um, right. Again, when you're looking at something like meat, uh, you know, there's going to be a, wa- a lot of water in that meat too. So, you, so, you know, if you look at it in terms of like beef jerky, which is dehydrated, it's it's not necessarily all that much. Um, you know, eggs are uh, pretty good. Eggs, you know, that's what it's on the. I look at that because that's yeah. what I. We put this on the cover of the book for a reason because it's kind of nature's perfect food. Mm. And when you think about it, an egg doesn't eat anything, but somehow it goes from that glop you put in the frying pan into a full chicken with the 200 tissue types. You know, except for feathers, it's all the same stuff we have as humans, and uh, somehow it does that without eating any. You know, pizza or cornflakes or bread or rice. It's just <laughs> there's just protein and fat in there, right? There's almost no carbohydrates. So, um, so that should tell you, you know, that's, that's the natural food sources that allow us to optimize our metabolism. And, and, and that keeps us healthy. It, 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 we can talk about this uh, a little, if you'd like, it helps to reverse chronic disease. We can measure that. Uh, we, we believe it helps prevent chronic disease that's a more challenging one to prove, but I think we have good evidence to suggest it would. Uh, and what we're investigating is the actual, you know, clinical therapeutic benefits for treating people that have chronic disease. And by that, right. I mean, uh, diabetes, uh, cancer, cardiovascular disease, and Alzheimer's are sort of the big four there. Right. Yes. Actually, that's a good point. It would be good to save some time to actually talk about that. Sure. Um, so fats so one one other thing on fats um so saturated fats in particular seem to get a really bad um rap everywhere mm-hmm. or not everywhere but but like the american heart association i think still has saturated fats so can you talk a little bit about the science of saturated fats and are, are they good or are they bad or can you have too many of them i would love to talk about that because <laughs> it's it's actually the non-science um they did science to try and prove uh, it, it all started. Um, I'm sure some of your uh, listeners will be familiar with Ansel Keys, who was really behind this notion that um, saturated fats would cause uh, heart disease in particular, uh, the diet heart lipid hypothesis. And um, uh, so they, they spent, he basically, he bullied everybody else out of the business uh, so that nobody, any contrary theories weren't allowed. He took control of the American Heart Association uh, control of the funding bodies at the National Institutes of Health and National Science Foundation so that anybody, all you really could study in nutrition was, was that fats were bad. That's all the funding there was. And so that's all we did for decades. And still today, it's challenging for us that are studying ketogenic diets to get uh, 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 funding from government bodies because it's contrary to what they're recommending as a healthy diet. They don't want to be seen that way. So um, they're starting to come around. The diabetes associations in Australia and New Zealand uh, and US and Canada and in Europe have all said that now uh, low carbon ketogenic diets are an effective uh, standard of care therapeutic for people with type two diabetes in particular. So they're starting to come around. Uh, the American Heart Association and the American Cardiology Association, they've backed off on the notion that eating cholesterol is actually has anything to do with your blood cholesterol. Uh, it doesn't, you, you know, the cholesterol in your blood is all produced in your liver. Um, and what you eat has, has little, if anything to do with your, your blood cholesterol. So that's why, you know, my wife and I eat probably three or four dozen eggs a week in various mm. forms and foods, uh, our blood chemistry is fine. <laughs> we haven't right. blown up or anything in 10 years of doing that. Um, so, so, so those things are, are starting to come around, but, but, uh, there was this notion that saturated fats cause heart disease, which, which permeates the, the, the zeitgeist, you know, today. I mean, most mm. people still think that. Now, they spent 30 years and did a, a number of studies, probably $2 billion in adjusted dollars trying to prove that, and they came up dry every time. Every time you, you, you eliminate the other variables, there's no relationship between saturated fat and, and heart disease. And in fact, some saturated fats like those in milk are actually, um, uh, they're beneficial, they're cardioprotective. And, and a saturated fat, by the way, um, just a little chemistry, is uh, it's, it's just carbon and hydrogen. You know, you've got the little glycerol uh, 
uh, glycerol backbone, then there's three chains and the different saturated fats are how long those chains are, but they're called saturated because there's as many hydrogens on there as possible. And the energy in there is between the carbons and hydrogens and between the uh, carbons and carbons. Um, but I would argue, you know, and I've done, I've, I've done this, Richard, in audiences that are, that are physiologists, that are molecular biologists, that are biochemists, that are physicians. Uh, and I've said, tell me what it is about a saturated fat that would be harmful to the cell because it's the cleanest burning fuel you can put in your body. It's just carbon and hydrogen. Now we know when you put double bonds in there and you get kinks, all kinds of wacky things happen. But a saturated fat, you know, they, they are metabolized in different ways to different lengths and, and some of them have different effects than others, but it's the cleanest burning fuel you can put in your body. It's, it's like high octane gasoline. It's what it is. Mm, cool. So, yes. so that's the science. The science that's is there the never thing. was any science. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes. Okay. Now that's good. So one thing, so you talked about eggs, you talked about um, dairy, so, but they are also things, common things that people have intolerances for. Uh, I mean, my yeah. wife has some intolerance for eggs and for um, dairy. Mm -hmm. So what would be kind of good alternatives to them? Yeah, you know, this brings up the question of, you know, can you be vegetarian or vegan and still be in, in nutritional ketosis? The answer is yes, um, absolutely. Especially vegetarian is a little easier. Ve vegan is a kind of a different thing. It's more of a political thing that's very challenging. I mean, you, you, you can't really be vegan unless you have a degree in nutrition because it's very challenging to get enough different foods to satisfy all of the nutritional needs on a daily basis, uh, what would constitute a balanced diet. So, uh, but for those people that want those options, you know, uh, soy, um, uh, and tempeh and other uh, soy things, uh, edamame, uh, that is um, a good source of protein uh, mm -hmm. as well that can substitute. Uh, there are some issues with too much soy because it can be an estrogen disruptor. So in particular, women that are trying to get pregnant probably wouldn't want to go down that route. Um, so I'm just talking about that, you know, more vegetarian, vegan-y kind of thing. Uh, and again, all oils, like mm -hmm. olive oil and vegetable oil, so you can get your fat that way. Um, if you're, if you're, um, uh, if you're just eating meat, I, I would just say, you know, eat the skin, get, get, you know, good organic food if you can. Um, so it's free of, you know, pesticides and hormones and things. Um, but eat the skin, eat the fat. Um, you know, don't shy away from, don't look for lean meats. There's no point. Don't, you know, if you are going to, um, and some people are, uh, lactose intolerant, but there's, there's not very much lactose in cream. So you can go straight to, you know, your wife might find, Milk is no good, but cream is actually okay. Or, or high fat cheeses are actually okay. Um, and, uh, you know, this also brings up the whole notion of the, the gut biome. And that's, you know, probably a story for another day because that's very, very complicated. But everybody reacts differently to the foods they eat, uh, partly because of their gut biome, which is why we um, advocate for personalized nutrition. So one of the organizations I'm involved with is called the Institute of Personalized Therapeutic Nutrition. Mm. And, and so each person has to kind of find their own way, depending on what, what they like, what they don't like, what reacts well with them and what doesn't. Um, but through all of those, there are options to uh, provide a ketogenic diet that provides full nutrition. The hardest one would be a vegan diet. I hope that you found the video informative please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button and choose all for any new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.